Hello, it's Valerie from Shale Brook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River, Nova Scotia. And uh, today I'm going to uh, be making an, what people would call an all-natural soap. And it's going to be with 30% tallow. And 2% of that is going to be bison tallow. I had this uh, just incredibly generous lady, Miha, from Apitherapy, send me some free-range bison tallow. And uh, it is, if there's a smell, it's incredibly fresh. But this is very yellow, and sometimes, depending on the time of year, or I guess what they're eating maybe too, you can have all white or you can have yellow. But this is a, just a gorgeous yellow. And uh, so I'm going to think about that when I'm uh, doing up my formula and I'm designing it. Uh, not my formula. My formula is already made up. Sorry about that. But when I design the soap. So um, I'll be using this. I'm going to have 30% tallow, uh, like I said in my formula, and 2% of that is going to be with the bison tallow. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be putting in this soap today is I'll be putting an egg yolk. I'm going to put some mulberry silk top, which is awesome stuff. Just awesome. Um, I'm hoping to put some coloring in it of chaga. I um, haven't quite decided what else, maybe some Alkanet that's been uh, in olive oil, that I've had in olive oil. Uh, I'm thinking maybe some zinc and some uh, zinc oxide and some white kale and clay. Uh, then in uh, the natural part of the batter I'm going to add some ground flax, ground flax seed. Uh, I hope to actually add some ground calendula. I'm not a big uh, fan of ground stuff in my soaps, uh, but I do have customers that like exfoliation as well, so I'm going to try some of those. Those were soaking uh, in olive oil. Actually, I had a whole bunch of them. Oh, don't know where they're at now. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of those. Oh, here they are right here. So, um, pretty small now, but I had those uh, in olive oil for almost a month. And uh, slow heat. I don't know if you can see the gorgeous color of that. There, I don't want to spill that on the floor, but that's beautiful. What a lovely, lovely scent that has too. So that's going to be going uh, in my soap. And uh, then I'm going to be using some calendula tea. That's in there. Do that. I had planned actually to use some frankincense resin and marshmallow root tea. But I think I'm not, I, I've been thinking about that. And I love the smell of frankincense tea. And actually, it's really good to drink, too. It wouldn't be that color, actually. Frankincense tea is like the color of milk. But that's the marshmallow in there, too, which is really good for your skin. But I think I'm going to use this in a different soap. So I have that. I had planned to put some kombucha in there, some turmeric and mango kombucha mixed with my sugars. I'm going to use some honey and some lanolin, uh, some coconut milk, yogurt of course, and uh, some aloe vera gel I'm going to put in this. So I'm thinking that uh, this is going to be a lovely soap, especially with me trying that bison tallow. And I'm going to use uh, uh, it's, uh, an extra 5% super fat after the cook of uh, emu oil, squalane, and sea buckthorn. Or I could substitute for Aragon. There's so many choices. But, uh, and then I will use an essential oil blend. I'm hoping of frankincense, myrrh, some benzoin, chamomile, lavender, sandalwood, patchouli, and some lemon. I could change that depending on when I'm blending it. So this was an introduction to that. I'm going to give the formula after the video in the text uh, after I upload it. And uh, I will bring you back in this video when I uh, go to mix the lye with my oil. So I'm going to, this is uh, just a preparatory introduction and I'll bring you back uh, as I go through the steps of the hot process cook. So thank you for joining me. Bye bye. Okay, I just brought you back because I wanted to show you that I'm going to add my egg yolk. I'm just going to show you this. I don't have the lye in here yet. Uh, my temperatures are still just a bit too high. But uh, so I ha I'm adding the egg yolk. Usually I put the egg yolk in, add oils, and till it's about half a cup temperate. But I had read where somebody else was just uh, 
just adding the yolk to it. So I did add oils to my yolk and uh, did it use a little whisk, but now I'm just going to pour it in there before I add my lies, my lye liquid and stick blend this up. So I thought you just might want to see me do that. like it's doing pretty fine by doing it that way. Um, I read where some people don't put any oils in with the yolk. They just throw the yolk in with their oils. So what I'm going to do is probably another five minutes and I'll bring you back and I'm going to put my safety gear on my gloves and my glasses bring you back and I'm going to add the lie and I'll show you that part okay bye bye so here we are back my lie which consists of calendula some kombucha and aloe vera juice um, and then I have my oils and the 30% tallow in there plus the egg yolk I have a couple teaspoons of kale and clay in there. That temperature of the oils is about 162 and the lye is about 168. And uh, the crock pot was off, but I'm going to turn that back on to warm right now. And uh, I'm going to add that. I have four ounces of coconut in this formula and two ounces. I'm going to add through the cook. Two ounces is going to be added after Vaseline stage when the, there's no lye left. Pour that lie in. Beautiful color. Just a golden color. Then I'm going to add the coconut milk while I'm stick blending and I'll just bring it to trace. A thick trace, I hope. Just to make sure that that's stirred and then I'm going to shut the camera off after I get that done. Do is bring this to a real thick trace and I'm going to put the cover on and uh, bring it back if anything happens. So I wanted to bring you back. It's been about five, seven minutes and you can see that that uh, is rising there. And uh, even though this wasn't on incredibly high temperatures, you can see that it's coming up the side of the pot. A beautiful yellow color, by the way. So I'm just going to flip that over and watch that that doesn't completely flow out of the pot. If you happen to be doing your soap and this happens, there's different ways to cook up process. You can do it low temperature, high temperature, on the stove, in the oven, in the microwave, however you wanna do it. In a bowl, higher temperatures, whatever you, whatever you like to do, whatever you're comfortable with. So even though this wasn't com uh, like the highest temperature you can cook at, this is what I call a medium temperature. They were both in the 160 range, the oils and the lye. Now with it like that, this will still volcano. So you have to be always watching your batter. Uh, always keeping an eye on it because uh, messes will happen. 
guarantee you, I know without a doubt. Really happy with the color of that. It's a really pretty color. That would be from the calendula tea and the calendula infused olive oil and that 2% of bison tallow. So <clears throat> this is actually looking really good here. Uh, I do have my crock pot on warm now. It was shut off because my temperatures had reached the level. But what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use my stick blender and I'm going to, um, there's some still uncooked pieces of soap in there. And I'm going to hurry this along just a bit. You don't have to do this. If you're new to this type of soaping, I would encourage you not to do this. I also, another thing I found that was really neat when you're doing this, if your stove starts to get too hot, too high, you can use a fine mist spray and that'll actually knock that down. So I'm going to just stick blend this probably a minute or less. I'm going to keep yawn while I do that. starting to rise so you just want to keep an eye on that if it seems like it's going to get out of hand then uh, you can use a, a whisk and your spray try to always keep an eye on it so it doesn't become unmanageable and it's uh, it's not too bad right now So as you can see that that's going through, it's already gone through applesauce stage. Uh, depending on your batter and how much you're using uh, of different oils, soft oils versus hard oils, that will make a difference on what stages it goes through, what temperatures you have it on. So I'm just going to grab my whisk. I have a plastic whisk. Just give it a little spray. I'm hurrying this one along a bit because I'm a bit behind and everything, so I'm trying to get this done, and I wanted to show this video on the bison tallow and 30%. So this is going to rise pretty quick here now. This is where this comes in real handy, and just remember to keep stirring. So this would not be for beginner soapers. almost there. You can see the color changing. So, voila. Now that would be basically we're at potato stage. Some of it is Vaseline stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up and I'm just going to let it set about three minutes and I'll bring you back. So as you can see, this is all Vaseline. That's been about three minutes and 10 seconds, I guess. Uh, this is all Vaseline and my crop is still on warm. And now I'm going to be adding my super fat of Aragon Squalane and Sea Buckthorn. So I did change it from Emu to um, Aragon, Aragon. I have this, uh, everything heated up in a frying pan on the stove that has hot water in it. That's my super fat, and this is, uh, this is a three pound batch of soap. I have three tablespoons of sugar, and uh, normally uh, I would mix in maybe maple syrup, but I'm using honey in this today. Now there's no honey in that because the temperature of that batter is too hot, and I'm going to keep the properties of my honey. So in that though is sugar mixed with kombucha, turmeric kombucha. And um, so when I get this all mixed in, so that stuff was very hot. 
that super fat and that sugar with the kombucha was all very hot, not, not boiling, but very hot. So I'm going to turn this in, stir this all in. I'm actually going to shut my crock off. I'm going to let this set probably, let me think, uh, I'll probably let that set not too long, I don't think. Uh, maybe I'll let that set about two minutes. I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to add my yogurt, which is uh, room temperature. Three tablespoons of yogurt at room temperature, plain, no sugar added. This one I think was 2% fat. And then I'm going to add 5% sodium lactate. That is going to be heated. And then I'm going to add my other two ounces of coconut milk and I'm going to be adding that hot. And then I'll probably, uh, I'll decide what I'm going to do then. Uh, sometimes I do things a bit different. But I have found for me lately, adding the yogurt before I add the sodium lactate has been working really good for me. The other thing I do with my batter, once I get it stirred up, just so that uh, I don't get hard pieces of soap, I'll give it about, I don't know, 10 sprays of a fine, fine, warm mist. And... Uh, so that I don't get any hard pieces that go in the batter. Okay, so we'll see you in about two or three minutes. So I'm going to be adding my room temperature yogurt right now. The other thing I forgot to tell you was, I always check my pH. Some people don't, but I do. Um, I sell my soaps and I give to people and young children and I wanna just make sure that everything is okay before it leaves my house. I usually test my soaps too. Uh, so one thing with adding room temperature, so I tested the pH, that was the other thing I wanted to tell you about, and it's all good to go. You can do that however you want. You can tongue zap it, um, use pH strips, phenolphthalein drops, uh, whatever you like to do. So that's the room temperature, temperature yogurt. Just make sure that you get it um, swirled in really well because if not, it can cook depending on how hot your batter is. And this is my hot sodium lactate. Um, so I saved about, uh, excuse me, I saved about three ounces of liquid out of the initial amount, which would have been uh, the yogurt, and I saved a one ounce of kombucha as well. So that still has to go in here. It's a pretty, pretty pale type color, I guess. I actually think I'm going to add, uh, I think I'm going to add my coconut milk now as well. The other thing I wanted to tell you about was botanicals and uh, my experience with some botanicals that I've used is uh, how, what color your batter is when you're putting them in. So this batter is yellow, so that is going to affect the colors. It won't affect the color of the chaga, chaga powder, but it, uh, I think it may affect, say if I was gonna use indigo in this, I think that would definitely affect that because the batter is not a light color, it's a more yellow color. Um, people will mix their botanicals differently. Those that do cold process or those that do hot process. Um, I noticed in cold process when I used indigo that if you have a really light batter, you can get, it appears to me that you can get a more lovelier blue. But that depends on how much indigo you use, how you mixed it, when you put it in. Now, I managed with hot process to get a beautiful light blue. I was very pleased with, uh, I called this soap blue strata. And I did another one too as well, but the batter was light colored. Uh, so that makes a big difference. How you mix it, I actually took my indigo powder and mixed it with boiling water. And then I let it set for a couple of days. And I used, I didn't use the grinds of it or the scratchy powder of it. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. 
but and I managed to get a lovely blue and I mix mine just with like I said boiling water uh, this some of the stuff that I'm adding here today which uh, after I separate it to uh, have about a cup of or about two-thirds a cup of chaga powders which is going to be a dark color and then I'm going to do an alkanet and um, kale and clay and zinc and I think I'm going to do a tiny bit of mangosteen powder hopefully it'll turn pink but that's where this is going to come in because this is a yellow batter that mangosteen powder may not turn pink but I'm going to use it anyway just just for fun just because I can <laughs> but anyway so then to the rest of the batter that's left I'm going to add a tablespoon of ground flax and I'm going to add a teaspoon of a full teaspoon of sea buckthorn powder uh, that is mixed with a tiny bit of glycerin and uh, some hot water and I also put in that the calendula petals that were uh, infused into the olive oil I took some of those and ground them up and slapped in there as well probably I probably put two full teaspoons of that in which now I'm wishing I wouldn't have because I see some pieces didn't get all ground up well so I got some strings in there which I know when I cut the soap that's gonna drag through those things happen the main thing is is that you make a soap that's great for the skin low in low in cleansing high in conditioning uh, depending on your skin type uh, you may you might like it a bit more drying to the skin that's uh, that's different we're all unique and uh, but I found this works good for me and my customers like it uh, so botanicals if you're using clays I, I find with me when I'm using clays I have absolutely no problem with those um, a natto seed powder I always strain mine if I'm doing it with water because it's very scratchy uh, some people infuse in oil and then just use the oil from that same with matter root um, so there's all kinds of different ways that you can use botanicals and this soap isn't really about how I use botanicals but uh, I just because I'm using some of them I thought I'd mention it uh, the other thing I do with zinc oxide because I have found that stuff just does not mix well at all and uh, I've tried different things but what works best for me with that in soap is to mix it with equal amounts of kale and clay and then I mix it all together the zinc oxide the kale and clay I add a tiny bit of glycerin and then I'll add warm water and I don't flood it I just add enough uh, for example if you are making a paste and I make a paste and I stir that and make sure that there's no grains left that I can see and then I'll add a bit more of warm water and do it again and I'll mix it like that and I have found that that has worked much much better for me um, so that's about it so next uh, the next thing that we have to do that I'm gonna do I'm gonna check the temperature on this for one thing and uh, if the temperature is 175 or lower I'm gonna add my honey and my essential oils and uh, I'll bring you back when I do that we're back and I'm going to be adding my honey and lanolin and my aloe vera gel uh, this has been warmed up and the temperatures down on my batter so I'm gonna put that in and I'm also going to add my essential oil blend which consisted of frankincense lavender benzoin myrrh resin myrrh infused oil lemon if I haven't said that already uh, benzoin a little bit of patchouli it's beautiful it's a, I really like the smell of this I think it's not uh, it's gonna complement the batter and it's so good for the skin frankincense and lavender so you can see that that batter is fairly manageable um, I think that's gonna probably solidify pretty fast because it has 30% tallow in it and palm oil and coconut and uh, the only two soft oils I have in it is castor and olive and I actually have been trying out some tests on uh, 
castor oil. My favorite so far is using it at 17% with, uh, with lard and tallow at higher percentages. And this one here is actually at 21%. Um, I had tried a 21% but not so high with tallow. So this is 21% castor and 30% tallow. 20% olive oil and whatever's left of that of palm. So I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty lovely to me. I'm going to start to separate that batter. So I'm not gonna shut that video off. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, if you find it boring, I'm so sorry. I, I never did really learn how to fast forward things. And I'm sure it's not that difficult. I could do it. So my apologies for that. And uh, so I'm going to separate this batter now before I add uh, that calendula ground flax and seed buckthorn. So I have spoons over in a hot frying pan over here. And um, then I have cups that are filled with hot water. I have all those botanicals and the zinc oxide and clay setting on the stove top that are around that frying pan. So everything is kept warm. And the stir sticks are going to be warm as well. Um, let me see, what was I going to do? Yeah, this is what I was going to do. So I'm trying to get away from using uh, one-time plastic. And uh, basically, this one here is uh, a lovely lady, Laura, Laura Elliott, had given me these. And I've been using them like crazy. So I'm just going to measure this out uh, before I add the flax to the rest of it. See what I'm going to have here. I think that'll be the mango. Is that for chaga? Sink. And I'm just going to give that one spray and then cover them up. so that everything can be kept as moist as possible in that. And uh, so what do we have here? I completely forgot already. Okay, so chaga and zinc and uh, alkanet and mango. Mangosteen, not mango. And the next thing I'm going to do is add that, uh, I'm adding the ground flax, sea buckthorn, and some of those ground up calendula petals, you know? So it's great to have visions and to dream about your soap and learn. Sometimes it doesn't always work out by any means. So it's to me, personally, my motto has always been, since I started making my own soap, is to make it as good as you possibly can for the skin. So if it doesn't turn out, at least you get something that you can give to family or friends and they're going to like. Use yourself. These are neat little cups. Steph's Micah has these, has in Micah and more. And these little wooden, like hockey stick pucks. I love those things. I got those at the dollar store. So I want to make sure that this is stirred in really well. Actually, that looks like it's going to be quite workable. And I'm going to go get my other colors for that.
Could you bring me over this for you? My husby's, my husby's, my hubby is helping me today as well. And uh, this is the mangosteen. I just used a tiny bit. I actually had a, a lovely girl from the Philippines send me some of this, Aslin, and I, I, I cannot pronounce her last name, so I'm not even going to try it, but how kind she was to send me this. Thank you. So this is the mangosteen, and I just used a really tiny bit, and I didn't strain it because I think this would have the possibility to be scratchy as well. Now to me, that actually doesn't look like it colored at all, but uh, I'm not gonna bother making any more powder in it. I'm just gonna put it in like that. And this is the Alcanet. And this is the oil from the Alcanet there. I probably actually shouldn't have used all that. I'm not sure how this will color with that batter's yellow, but we'll give it a go. And we could be pleasantly surprised. You never know. How the colors look when the batter is hot is it has the pot obviously can change when they're cold or when that hot process cools down. This is just a light purple, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. So it's just a very light purple. That is such a lovely smell. Oh, I'm liking that. That's very nice. And uh, you see what I have the most of here. Okay. I think I'll put uh, the zinc in here. Zinc and kale and clay. Hopefully, uh, with the design, there, it will show a difference. So these spoons I'm using have been heated up as well. I have found that really for doing designs in hot process, it pays to have everything as warm as you can, except your yogurt. Uh, that does not pay to have that like that. And the chaga, I'm, because it's real dark, I'm not going to add it all. I'm just going to add a tiny bit to see what that looks like before I add any more to it. I might add just a bit. So the colors that you'd like to have, sometimes it's very hard to tell. And uh, experience can play a big part in what you use. Uh, I have a real big problem sometimes with adding, thinking I have a little bit of batter, but I actually have too much batter. And so less is more sometimes. I have a hard time learning that. Okay, so that's just a nice light brown. I'm just going to move those colors out of the way. So the design that I was thinking of doing with this, I mean, there's m many things that you can do with it. Um, I'm not sure if the design I'm thinking about is going to work. I'm uh, just going to add about half a teaspoon of water to that because it's very thick. That was the Alcanet. I always find that does that too with hot process. It thickens right up. I don't know why that does that, but with the design I'm doing, I need just a bit. Probably didn't use enough. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do with this, before I put it into the mold, I'm just going to take this crock out, if I can lift that. Here we go. And I actually am going to pour colors into this bowl first. And this bowl I have heated up. So what I, there's many different ways to do things, but this one, I think, oh, look, that's pretty, isn't it? I don't know if you can see that. That's a pretty color. I'm going to pour it all in here, all of it. I hope this works. <laughs> Sometimes you should really try things out. I mean, I've done different designs like this, um, so it's not as if it was the first time. It's just that this is just going to be just a tad different of how I layer it how the other colors go in. Whoa. Okay. So you can see that. And this batter is hot. So you just, if you're not comfortable doing this, don't. But there's absolutely no lie left, so no worries that way. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take dark colors, and I'm going to hold them up high, and I'm just going to go, well, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try it so that it goes right, and I can tell that that's just too thick. That's not going to work. So I might have to look at trying something different here. I'm going to keep doing this. And next, I think I will do this one. That one is a bit thinner. I think I'm going to have to give this a swirl with a stick, too, I guess. Then I'm going to put this alkanet in next. Now, I definitely could have loosened that up a bit more, and there's no problems doing that, but um, that's up to you, how you wanna, how you see you're doing your design. And this is the mango stain. I think that's just gonna plop. I might give that a seven second spin in the microwave. Sometimes that can loosen up your batter really easy if you just put it in the microwave for five to seven seconds, depending on your microwave. Just give that a spray so it doesn't dry out too bad. Okay, that loosened up a bit. In hindsight, I wish I would have did that with the other ones now. So always learning. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like when it's done. So I think what I will do with this is... Uh, I'm going to take a really big spoon I have here. I'm just going to heat it a bit in this hot water. That's over on my stove. You pass me the mold when, when I say. And I'm just going to turn this over a bit. Not a lot. Just going to bring up some of that batter from the bottom. And then I'm going to pour that into my three pound mold. Thank you. So I have this over by the burner too. And basically what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to pour it in the center, I think. Or maybe I'll just pour it along. <laughs> uh, there's different ways. Sorry about that. I'm just going to bang that on the floor a minute. different ways you can cut this soap. I, I like cutting it when it's like you cut it like in four sections and then you can use that to cut it instead of cutting it uh, down this way you can cut it through this way. That can give you some really different looks but I'm not going to do that with this soap this time. I'm just going to cut it straight down. See what we get. You never know what you're going to get. And 
I'm going to get a nice puck out of that. Now with this, I'm just going to just curly cue, do circles back and forth. And that's about it. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to post the cut. Uh, I don't think I'll show me cutting it, but I'm going to post the cut. So hopefully I have helped you along your soaping journey. And I uh, thank you so much for joining me. Make great soap. Bye-bye. This is a puck from the 30% tallow with the 2% bison tallow. And calendula infused olive oil. I just, uh, I'm testing the, the lather on it. Pretty beautiful. I'm filling up a container there to wash as well. So, oh, feels so lovely with the honey and the lanolin as well. Gorgeous lather on that. You can uh, see the big bubbles, which is nice, but I always like to see it uh, get to that lather part. Beautiful. Feels wonderful. Just wanted to show you that. Thank you.